Hello, I'm Frank Kaufman. I'm the president of the 12 Gates Foundation. I've put a little piece together today, which I've entitled, what is it? It's called Good With Me In The Middle. Good With Me In The Middle. Uh, I picked, in order to put this together, I picked a little piece of writing from a preacher from back in the 50s. This is a straight up uh, Christian preacher. So uh, when you first hear it, you're going to just hear a Christian message. But uh, anybody who knows my podcasts knows that um, uh, that the the spirituality communicated here is universal. It's for every person and every believer of every sort, and also for people not even associated with. Uh, particular religions, but believe in goodness in some fashion or another. But when I first read it, uh, it's going to come out as straight up, uh, straight Christian preaching. And the passage reads like this. Because Jesus cared even for people who were in the bosom of the enemy, and because he led a life focused more on the will of the whole, that he was responsible for, rather than on his own happiness, he was made into a central figure and the savior of humankind. In this way, he won the fight with the satanic world. What then must we faithful believers realize? We must be sorry that we failed to shed tears of concern and prayers for the sake of evil people, The more people are going to be judged for their misdeeds, the more we must pray for them. Moreover, we can never forget that behind us is Jesus who is concerned for us and is praying for us. So that's a Christian message. It's an interesting one. It's an an unconventional one, not one you'd commonly hear in traditional Christian churches, but it's purely Christian per se. And uh, I want to do a quick thing in which I'm going to kind of do a translation of this so that uh, believers of any any tradition, uh, practitioners of any form of spirituality, and even people trying to live a good and decent life, uh, find in the essential message of this a perfectly clear message that doesn't need to be uh, doesn't need to be inside of or are couched in purely Christian terms. So uh, the first part says, because because Jesus even cared for the people who were in the bosom of the enemy, and because he led a life focused more on the will of the whole that he was responsible for, rather than on his own happiness, he was made into a central figure and savior of humankind. So Jesus, Jesus can be any individual, any deity, any concept, any ideology, any spiritual force, any version of the absolute, any entity that a person has in their own system that occupies the embodiment or the uh, horizon of the ideal of goodness. So in the case of Christians, of course, that's Jesus. In the case of Muslims, they may have their greatest bond of love and affinity toward the prophet, peace be upon him. Although, of course, Muslims do have a great love for Jesus and also prophets who are traditionally thought of as Jewish prophets. It could be the Buddha. It could be Lao Tzu. It could be God. It could be heaven. It could be simply good itself. So Jesus is, in Christian terms, that figure who embodies the ideal most perfectly, uh, but every tradition can have that entity or figure or concept or thought or ideal that would fit naturally into this uh, this initial sentence. So it says, because Jesus cared even for the people. So you can just say, because the prophet cared even for the people, or because Moses cared even for the people, or because Abraham cared even for the people, or because Mahavira cared even for the people who are in the bosom of the enemy. And if we, uh, so let's just call the enemy 
those individuals who have been caught up in ways that thwart the ideal of goodness. They are, they are enemies of the welfare of their fellow human being. They cause suffering to others. They conspire to, uh, to spawn deceit, harm, hardship, uh, uh, pain, difficulty. So the, those who are in the bosom of the enemy are those who are, for whatever misfortune, perpetrating harm to the earth, perpetrating harm to their fellow human beings. So because Jesus cared for people who were in the bosom of the enemy, or because Mahavira cared for people who were in the bosom of the enemy, or because Buddha cared for the people who were in the bosom of the enemy, because this figure who represents the ideal of the highest form of goodness in my life, because that figure cared even for people who were instrumental in causing harm to others, the enemy, who, who perpetrate all version of despair and hardship, who cause it, even, Jesus cared even for those people. The Buddha cared even for those people. And because he or it or the idea or all good leads a life focused more on the will of the whole, more on the will of everybody that that, that figure is responsible for, that the prophet is responsible for, that Moses is responsible for. Because that person cared more for the people, even for the people in the bosom of the enemy, and be, because he led a life that's more for the sake of all people or the whole or all good or the planet or the universe that that that, that figure is responsible for rather than for its own self, its own will, its own happiness, its own welfare, who cares more for the whole than for its own happiness, that entity becomes the central figure and the savior of humankind. It becomes the horizon towards which humankind is lifted up out of the mire of our difficulties, of our struggles, of our moral failures. And in this way, in this way, wins the fight with the satanic world or wins the fight with the world that is hostile to the positive uh, uh, welfare and delight and happiness of all people. So in essence, the first paragraph is that, that center, that ideal perfect center, cares, cares even for people who are causing harm and more for the will of everybody, all people, than for itself. This is the way it becomes the center and becomes the savior of humankind, the, the, that which lifts us up. In this way, the fight, the, in this way, the good, the all good, the center of good, the highest good, wins wins the fight in this passage. The satanic world wins the fight with the forces of evil, caring more for those who are in its grip, caring more for the whole, for all people and all things, more than for the self, is the way that it becomes the center and the savior and wins the fight with the forces of evil. So now, then the next passage, what, was me, what must we as faithful believers realize? So what must I as a person related to the prophet or related to the Buddha or related to the all good or related to heaven? What must I as a faithful believer realize? What must I do in the, now that I see how goodness is embodied, what it truly is made up of? How do I realize that? Then the, then the preacher goes on to say, first, we must be sorry that we, that we fail to shed tears and concern of prayer, even for the sake of evil people. My gosh, uh, I certainly, if, if that's something I'm supposed to have done, then I really do need to uh, <laughs> shed tears of repentant prayer that I've, that I've not done that. If that's how, <coughs> excuse me, if that's how the good accomplishes the will of heaven and the ideal of good, then if that's my responsibility also, then the first thing I have to do is be sorry that I've not done that at all. And then, and then the preacher goes on to explain why should I be praying for people who are doing uh, evil things? Why should I care about them? Why should I be concerned about them? Why should I shed tears of concern for such kind of people who are hurting others? 
the immediate account or explanation is the more people are going to be judged for their misdeeds, the more we need to pray for them. They are, they, the people who are committing evil around us are bringing upon themselves such a massive avalanche of misfortune that these are the ones that need prayer most desperately. And so this is a curious twist on the responsibility of a faithful believer. Not only that we should be caring and praying and be concerned for those who are committing and causing evil in the world around us, and maybe even to my own self, maybe even to my own family, maybe even to my own daughter or my own grandmother. How, can, how on earth is it possible for me to pray for such people or even to be repentant that I haven't? It's because that person is in such dire straits as a result of finding him or herself in the throes of the capacity to cause this kind of harm that they desperately need someone to pray for them. That should be me. The final part of this little passage is, moreover, we can never forget that behind us, and this preacher says, is Jesus. But then again, I repeat, you can replace it with anybody or anything, whatever your central ideal is. You must never forget that behind us is God or behind us is the Buddha or Buddha nature or behind us is the prophet. Behind us is that ideal of good, that ideal of good that, that designs the way for how evil is, is, is won over or, or the fight is won how evil is conquered, designs the way we as faithful believers should therefore follow that way because we are com we're committed and desirous that evil end. And so behind us is the originator of that way. In this case, he says Jesus. In another case, you could call it the prophet or Moses or whoever is your revered one, your beloved one, your ideal one, or even the idea. Behind you are the forces of goodness. Behind you are the forces of peace. Behind you are Atman and Atman or whatever, whatever it is. I'm not kind of conf trying to confine anybody to any particular religious uh, construct. I'm just saying that the all good wins over evil in this way. We, If I myself am trying to be bound to the all good, I have to have similar concern for even evil people and for the whole. But while I'm trying to do that, the final line is so uh, thrilling. Behind me, behind, moreover, we can never forget that behind us is Jesus, or behind us is God, or behind us is the infinite power of the all good who is concerned for the us and is praying for us this is the this is the the, the fantastic kind of flow of how evil is genuinely dissolved is that the paragon whether it be jesus or god or whomever the paragon shows the way we repent that we didn't spot it didn't live it we start to take up that way. And as soon as we start to take up that way, that most peculiar capacity to be able to pray for those who are doing evil, even against myself, once I start to move on that path, behind me is the infinite all good who's concerned for me and is praying for me. So this is why I've called this uh, small piece good with me in the middle. It's an exciting, it's an exciting adventure, an exciting opportunity, an exciting experiment that I go out and try this odd and rare and difficult thing of actually trying to pray to for the protection of evil people. And the moment I begin that, behind me I'm filled up with the love and care and concern and prayers of Jesus Himself or God Herself or or Gaia herself is behind me and within me and, f and filling me while I carry out the, the consistent extension of the, I, of the perfect way that good is. And that's good with me in the middle. Thanks a lot for listening. Talk to you again soon.